control of the channel joining the western with the eastern Mediterranean. The greatest ploughing season in British history is now in full swing. Farmers are ploughing by day and are ploughing by night. Land that could never have been ploughed with horses is now being ploughed easily and swiftly with the help of these big new tractors. Tractors that look like tanks and pull like elephants. The harvest of 1942 made history. After three years of war, we're producing two thirds of the food we eat. And in this weather, 45 million healthy appetites shift a very big tonnage. When war was declared, landowners, farmers and farm workers were asked to work together on county war executive committees to increase food production in every corner of every county. It was all voluntary work. Their first job was to go prying into their neighbour's business, looking for grass to plough up. They were asked to plough up two million extra acres in the first year, and they ploughed it up. There were only about 50,000 tractors in the country in 1939, and in counties like Leicestershire, they hadn't seen a plough for years. But soon, tractors and ploughs and drills and binders were rattling and roaring into the fields from factories in Britain and America and Canada and Australia. And today, Britain has more tractors to the square mile than any other country in the world. We've added three million horsepower to the land. And farmers are growing heavier crops on more land with less men. And the Women's Land Army is three times the size it was in the last war. These girls are a great success on the land. They love their work. In fact, the only complaint from farmers is they will keep on getting married. Each farmer has to pull his weight or make way for a man who can. It's hard, but we can't afford to waste land. The farmers can't win this war, but idle farms could soon lose it. New farming ideas are being shown in every district, shown on farms the neighbours have known for years. Farms where they know there's no deception, no funny business. Thousands of acres of fenland lay dying before the war, and now they're producing record crops. High in the Welsh mountains, we've discovered 50,000 acres of deep soil which can produce grand potatoes. This fine crop is a thousand feet above sea level. Rough moorlands ploughed up and sown with new grass seeds show a sensational increase in feeding power. Increases up to 3,000%. These sheep think science is wonderful. Tons of lovely grass, no coupons, just help yourself. Clear running rivers, drains and ditches are of course the basis of all farming. And today, the Ministry of Agriculture has over 400 big diggers. When Mussolini drained the Pontine marshes, he took 13 years on the job. And at the end, he gave his people a holiday. As a matter of fact, he took one himself. And the girls thought he was marvellous. Now we reclaimed the same number of acres in seven months, in the middle of a war, and didn't even stop to ask the time. Today, ancestral parks, common lands, golf links, race courses, and building estates are all growing meals. And for the first time since the Doomsday Book, every farm in England has been surveyed and classified. The King has given a royal lead by ploughing up Windsor Park, and the Queen has become the patron of the Women's Land Army. Farmers have done their job in spite of the fact that thousands of their sons have gone off to the yeomanry. Miles of country has been taken over for military training. In some counties, they just farm the strips between aerodromes. Barbed wire, tank traps, landmines, they haven't been much help, and neither have the Germans. All over East Anglia, farms have been bombed and blasted. And during the Battle of Britain, over 70,000 bombs were dropped on the farms of Kent alone. Even today, 
Many farmers work within range of the German guns at Calais. One Kent farmer had his dairy herd wiped out. On another farm, a barrage balloon was shot down 66 times. Farmer said he couldn't help laughing. British farmers and farm workers have been working just about as hard as it's possible for people to work. There's been no absenteeism, no strikes, and they're not complaining. In fact, there's great joy in their hearts. At last, they see the farmland of England in good heart and looking more lovely than it's looked for generations. And they're proud that their skill is helping their country in its hour of need. Proud to see our oldest and greatest industry better equipped and more productive than ever before in history. <laughs>